Hey there folks, Ben Farrell for Ben Farrell Freelance. This is episode 25 and this week we are talking about the three act structure. Hey there, Ben Farrell for Ben Farrell Freelance. First off, let me say I'm sorry we didn't have an episode for you the last couple of weeks. We've been sick over here, had a couple sick kids, I've been sick myself. Rylan is still sick, so she'll be back next week. But we are ready to keep going. So we're going to do some episodes about putting together your plot structure. And to talk about plot structure very simply, we're going to start with the most basic type of plot structure, which is the three-act structure. Now, the three-act structure translates the easiest to those of you who are screenwriters, but a lot of the elements to it can be transposed to if you're writing a novel or even a short story, a short play, and a two-act play is a little different, but I will do a future episode on how to adjust what we're going to present to you this week into if you're doing a two-act stage play. Now, we have a lot of ground to cover when we're breaking down the three-act structure for you, so we're going to dive right into it. The three-act structure is basically taking your entire plot and breaking it into three parts. The largest part of those three, as you can imagine, is the middle. The middle is about twice as large as the first part and the second part. Now remember, this is a very basic three-act structure breakdown, so there's been a lot of movies, a lot of plays, a lot of books that have gone outside of this structure and have been very successful, but this, we are talking about basics, and if you're a beginning writer, this is a really good guideline. Now from a screenwriting standpoint, since most movies are about two hours, maybe an hour and a half, but let's just say it's a two hour movie that you're writing. Your first act should be about your first 30 minutes or 30 pages. Most screenplays translate for a minute per page. So the first 30 minutes is your first act. The second 60 minutes is your second act. And the last 30 minutes is your third act. Now that's just a basic timeline. As far as your plot points, you need to try and create a landscape that is always ascending. And by landscape, or maybe even a profile, Here's a graphic to kind of demonstrate what I mean by that. The line through the middle of this graphic is basically showing that your plot points are always ascending. The goals are always getting more intense. The obstacles for the main character and maybe the people around him are getting more intense. And you can see that each act has its own climax. There's a climax for act number one. There's a midway point, and we'll discuss that in a little bit. There's a climax for act number two. And then in act three, there is a climax for the entire story. But as you can see on the graphic, your plot points are always ascending by intensity until it reaches that second act climax and your climax of the entire story, which is in act three, before it actually starts coming back down, kind of like a mountain. The way back down off the mountain is going to be your resolution, what the character learned, and basically what the French call a dénouement. Now I'm gonna break down this landscape by using the movie City Slickers as an example. It stars Billy Crystal. It was written by Babalu Mandel and Lowell Gantz, who through the 90s wrote several movies that were very, very well crafted, especially for a commercially proven market. So City Slickers is a buddy picture, so the first act does take time in setting up the goals and the obstacles for the rest of the movie for Mitch's two friends. Mitch is the main character. However, for the sake of breaking down this plot structure, we're gonna go ahead and focus on Mitch. Now for Mitch, the first act of the play basically spends a lot of time on why he's having a midlife crisis. He's having this midlife crisis because he just turned 40, he doesn't understand where he is in his life, and they spend time about how it's affecting his marriage. After that, the climax of act one is basically where his wife suggests that he goes on a cattle drive, suggested by one of his friends, as a vacation. And she kind of insinuates that their marriage is on the line if he doesn't go. So there's something at stake. That's how they create a climax for the first act. Now in act two, we're gonna to get to our midway point. And that midway point for City Slickers was Curly dying. Curly was the head cattleman that was driving the entire herd with all the vacationers and all the City Slickers that was joining the cattle drive. But Curly was the boss, the trail boss, and he ends up dying. That's your midway point. Now, this plot structure 
is very much more detailed than that. And I'm gonna get into an adjustment on that a little bit later. So that brings us to the climax of act two. And by then it's just Mitch and his two friends who are trying to drive the herd and they come across a river that they get trapped in. During that sequence, Norman the calf gets trapped in the river as well. Mitch risks his life to go get him and his friends have to help him. Otherwise Mitch is going to drown. So that's the climax of act two. Act three presents the climax of the entire story, which is Mitch and his friends driving the herd back to the cattle ranch against all odds and successfully achieving their goal. Lastly, the wrap up or the denouement of this story structure is Mitch goes back home. He's at the airport. He's reunited with his wife and he has found his smile. Now, again, that's a very basic breakdown. So let's go ahead and throw in a little bit of an adjustment in act two called the multi-mountain structure. The multi-mountain structure of act two is basically where the obstacles that you create for your main character and supporting characters throughout act two are actually larger and kind of smaller climaxes. The point is that each peak of each mountain is more intense and more hard to overcome than the last one. So let's break down how city slickers use that multi-mountain structure for their second act. In that movie, the buildup to the first mountain is that Curly and Mitch do not get along. The climax to that point of the story is Mitch and Curly have kind of a come to Jesus meeting while they're camping and they've struck out on their own to pick up stragglers from the herd. Now what you should also notice from this graphic showing the mountain range of plot points is that there are valleys and what should we put in those valleys? Those valleys are when we're descending from our major plot points that's when you start building your character development. That's when conversations start explaining who they are, what their background is, things from their history. Basically go back to the character development episode that I have, all the stuff that you do for that exercise, this is your point in act two where you get to share that from your characters. It's these valleys where we get to learn who your characters really are. Now, the second peak of our mountain range that's our midway point. So that is, like we said before, that's where Curly dies. Now, just like the landscape that we did that was more simple, just remember that your journey to each peak on their mountain range has to involve obstacles that were bigger than the last journey to the last peak. That's important because your viewer, your audience, or your reader is gonna say, holy crap, how are they gonna get past this? So as City Slickers, the final peak of our second act mountain range is when the cowboys are too drunk and they abandon the entire group of tourists. Now they have to figure out how to get back home safely and what should they do with the herd that they've been driving this entire time? Which is when Mitch and his friends decide they're going to be the ones to drive the herd while everybody else starts making their way back to the target ranch. And again, we come back down from that peak of our mountain range. The three of them are driving the herd. We have more scenes where we develop the last of their characters before we ascend to what ultimately is the final climax of act two, which is them battling the river. So that's basically your three act structure with a little bit of an adjustment in the second act to show how to make it more dynamic and using city slickers as an example. Remember, this is a commercially proven way of laying out your plot. It's been proven, it makes money, and it makes sense. But we're writers, we're artists. Think outside the box, I encourage you, I challenge you to come up with a new way of laying out plots. There's been a hundred guys to do it before you, a hundred gals to do it before you, and they've successfully established a career by doing that. So think outside the box, but this is a good baseline for you. We'll be doing some more episodes on story structure specific to the genre that you're writing. But for now, this is Ben Farrell for Ben Farrell Freelance. Thanks for hanging out with me. It's been two months, guys. It's time for a new contest. Come on. Yeah, so we got to have three sentence stories sent our way once again for the next two months. Tell us your three sentence stories to go with this photo. I know guys, that was a pretty crazy photo. So get those three sentence stories in. If your name is pulled out of our drawing, then you'll win a free copy of one of my stage plays. And this stage play that we are doing is Morning News. Morning News. It's a play about small town news and you can learn more about it by going to benfowlwriter.com. So stay safe and keep watching our video. <laughs> Bye.